Welcome to another long overdue episode of the Box Jumper Podcast. This is a fun one. I'm not sure about listeners of this podcast, but I am personally a voracious consumer of podcasts. Many of them, surprise, surprise, are fitness related. And this episode is in part inspired by a recent episode of another one of those podcasts that I listen to faithfully, the Very Not Random Podcast, hosted by OG CrossFitters and respected programmers Adrian Bosman and Pat Sherwood. On this episode in late October... Uh, Pat and Adrian had a long chat with affiliate owner David Osario of CrossFit South Brooklyn, in which he talked about not assigning RX loads in workouts. It was a more complete conversation than that description captures, but in essence, he was talking about programming with structured scalings of the workout of the day so that everyone has kind of their own version of the workout. And I immediately thought, well, that certainly sounds familiar because the gym at which I train, Onside Performance Center in Halifax, uses a system called the level method to provide multiple versions of the same workout to different levels of athlete, meeting the athlete objectively where they have demonstrated themselves to be with a series of benchmark assessments that provide a cross-section of the 10 general physical skills and the objective measures of fitness, work capacity over time. And that was wonderfully defined by Greg Glassman's article in the CrossFit Journal, What is Fitness? article on October 1st, 2002. So that's the backstory on the why of today's episode. The Level Method, brainchild of Nathan Holliday and his team, is a clever, systemized approach to deliver, in my mind, five things at once. One, an organized and standardized means of programming and scaling slash modifying workouts to relative levels of fitness and intensity. Two, an objective assessment uh, and tracking of fitness levels over time, according to that classic Glassman definition. Three, an education and objective setting tool that allows athletes and coaches to visualize skill, strength, and capacity progressions throughout their fitness journey. Four, a built-in safety check and ego dampener for everyone involved to use these objective measures to make appropriate decisions about their fitness and their workouts. And finally, five, a guide and training tool of sorts for coaches in the CrossFit space that helps provide a common framework for their approach to coaching while retaining the flexibility to personalize their approach and shine as they would naturally in front of the room. To get a little bit more context around the thinking behind the level method system, I reached out to Nathan and he immediately agreed to talk a little shop. It's a fun discussion in which we geek out a little on coaching, programming, and systems. So whether you're a coach or an athlete, I hope you get some nuggets of great information from our chat. In 10 seconds, I'll be talking systems to deliver fitness with Nathan Holliday of The Level Method. Nathan, welcome to the Box Jumper Podcast. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, for for listeners that aren't familiar with what the level method is, at some point we're going to back up and, and talk about how you got into this space in the first place. But right off the top, I, I want to get your definition of what the level method is and how it applies to gyms, both CrossFit and non-CrossFit alike. Sure. I mean, level method is just martial arts belts for fitness and it just helps someone map their way through the complex world of fitness. So if you look at the core piece of the level method is the map, the mm -hmm. big colorful diagram. And on the left-hand side, you have categories and then moving up the line, you have levels. And so right. that's basically the map helping someone navigate themselves through the world of fitness. Right. And down that left hand side is is um, kind of where some of the interesting magic happens, because you've got the, those assessments are in a variety of different domains um, that touch on uh, some of the things that CrossFitters are fairly familiar with. Um, but just kind of, can you talk about the, the groupings of what those uh, what those categories are that that you assess and then how are they used? Sure. So, um, you know, behind any sort of fitness system or workout there are energy systems and energy systems kind of map out how the body uses fuels um and so you have sort of short medium long energy systems and the map was it, the groupings don't have to do with those but the groupings have to do with the way the assessments would be done but the energy systems really lay the foundation 
behind the scenes of why the levels are the way they are calibrated up, but also why you'll see, you know, short, uh, skill based, and then some longer stuff also. So it's like behind the scenes, we have energy systems which lay the foundation. Right. Um, and then uh, the, obviously separating the the belt colors would be the relative levels of not just uh, fitness, but skills as well, because there's there's a clear progression that um, is is part of the way that you've mapped things out. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the big question is always like, how do you lower the complexity for somebody? How do you make it interesting? And th there's a map going through fitness and levels, you know, just it's why martial arts belts are in existence. You have levels and it helps someone see where they are in that world. Right. And the if you look at the categories, they're broken up. So they're groupings, but they're also really broken up into a wide array of different kinds of skill sets. So you have things mm -hmm. like 20 rep back squat. And, and it, I mean, you've been in fitness for a long time and you'll probably recognize these worlds so you have like the kettlebell world and it's kind of coming from rkc and taking in a lot of these different elements that are you know part of what fitness well-rounded fitness should be so in the early days of kind of putting it together figuring out what the the categories are those 15 is probably the most important thing that you can do to lay out a framework so if anybody's ever thinking like okay um i want to build a level system the first thing is always, well, what are you testing? Right. What are you going to be testing and why are you choosing those and what elements? And, and the level method is really designed to take fitness, like the broad world of fitness, and distill it down into as few categories as possible that will give someone the best indicator of where their fitness is. And so, um, you know, picking those takes a long time. And then the calibration up also takes a long time, because as mm -hmm. an example, you might have like blue, you know, of running and then you have blue of, uh, you know, front squat. And well, how do those relate? Why is one blue like what, how does that right. world, world work? And that's that's calibration. So you have the category, the categories, which are really important. And then you have how those categories are calibrated. Um, and that the calibration takes a lot of time to gain the data. The categories are a product of, you know, just a long time of thinking about it and trying to distill and figure out what the best groupings would be. Right. I, I can see that there are a couple of different potential entry points um, on on a discussion of the level method because you've got the, the um, you know, coming up with a systematized approach to uh, assessment of where a person is and where their progression is intending to take them so that they can see those observable, measurable, repeatable uh, tests that then determine whether or not they're legitimately making progress. And the way that you've broken them down um, allows them to track progress in um, a, a, a more complex, nuanced manner because they're not you know, they're not just hitting uh, a hero workout every six months and seeing whether or not their time changes. They're looking at component tree to to their um, their skill assessments as well. So you look at something like back squat, you look at the neuro and core assessment, you look at and like things that are on different ends of the map um, from the athlete's perspective gives them the ability to look ahead, look at where they are now and where the gaps may lie too, because somebody could be um, you know, white or orange in one skill and much more advanced in another skill that maybe they're up in purple or brown. And reconciling the difference between those two becomes an important facet of how they manage their fitness on an ongoing basis. Should they be aiming to narrow that gap as much as possible? Is it reasonable to narrow that gap across the myriad of skills that you're assessing? Yeah, I think that really comes to how advanced is the athlete along in their journey, you know, and in the early days, you know, you might have strengths and everybody has strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and level method is really designed to focus on your weaknesses to kind of bring those things up over time. Um, the programming also addresses that sort of stuff. So if you're, you know, if you do a program or are familiar with it, we have what are called levels considerations. And this is people ask like, well, how do you take all of these levels and put them into a group or into a workout? And levels considerations is how we do that because in every element of a workout, you'll have like, say you have a deadlift in the workout and you have an upper body pull 
in the workout. Right. You can see now what your levels are for each of those things and then mix and match the programming to get a workout that is designed for your level. So those the 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 strengths and weaknesses definitely come into play for somebody that wants to maybe work on their weaknesses by doing ex, you know extra stuff outside of class. Right. Class right. will then help you, you know, get all of the the broad fitness categories, you know, just that wide um inclusive fitness. Um, but the the way that we progress someone is really through, you know, focus. I, I meet with, you know, you meet with a, a client and then it's like, well, wh- where's the weaknesses? What are the problems? And let's add some accessories or add some things to your regular program to to help with that. Now, right. as someone gets more and more advanced, the degree that you can eke out these gains drops the same way as it gets harder to lose body fat as you get older or whatever. Right. Or put five, like a, five pounds on a squat. It's you know, right. It's like yeah. you're shrinking. You're shrinking. It's harder and harder to get these things, these these gains. And the the higher you go up, the faster you can lose them too. So you might like train for something, get way up there, and then not do it for six months. Re reassess, and now you're way lower. But this is just the game. This just becomes the game of fitness. And level method was designed really to gamify a lot of those elements. So like the the broad class isn't to make everybody absolutely as fit as possible. It's almost to give them a broad, you know, uh, program, but then show them where their weaknesses are so they can yeah. dive into these worlds. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not good at running. So I'm going to maybe dive into some running workshops and like learn about it because that's in my mind, that's what fitness really is. It's like, if you look at CrossFit old school, it's like your virtuosity in all of these different things. You know, you get right. really good at them. You immerse yourself in, you know, a couple of weeks of uh, gymnastics and that sort of stuff. And you get much better as an athlete. And so level method rewards that we don't really, it, that's not really overtly talked about very much, but that's really what we're doing. Cause it's, it's, you know, kind of impossible to have 15 categories at a max for the rest of your life, right? Right, Like you're going to drop down and you're going to come back up. So it's like, it becomes this game of fitness. Yeah. For the same reason that, I mean, if, if, for those that, that listen, that also happen to enjoy some of the competitive aspects of CrossFit, when you see certain, you know, certain athletes names come up, you know, oh, well, they're, you know, not only are they a monster overall, but they're really good at this one particular thing. So if this one thing comes up, then we know to expect to crush on that particular workout. Um, you know, it, for the same reason, you're, you're still going to see, even with the level method, you're still going to see certain areas that an athlete is just going to naturally excel in because, because either they're, um, they're naturally gifted in a particular area. They're, they're just, they've got the genetics for it. They've worked on it, whatever the case may be, but it also gives them the opportunity to look at what some of their weaknesses are as well and almost codify that into how they are approaching their workouts. I think one of the interesting things that I noticed when the level method was first brought to the gym at which I train was um, how you articulate how that translates into athlete safety and bringing an athlete from beginner into um, joining a a CrossFit gym. I mean, to me, that was maybe the most valuable aspect of having this, this notion of scaling applied to the programming across the board. Can you talk about where, what the, what was the genesis of, applying this this um this idea of coming up with a, a matrix of skill sets and levels and have that apply to bringing a new athlete along into the sport yeah so a big part of the the criticisms of crossfit is the safety right safety it always comes back fundamentally to scaling Right. I mean, like yeah. if you have somebody and they're all doing the appropriate workout, there's not going to be very m- much injury or people doing crazy stuff. It's when you start to get somebody who sees something very cool and then they're like, I'm going to go do that or try that or, or ramp up all their weights or do all these things, thinking that they're going to get better faster by doing that. Right. So the level method really takes into account the early white, yellow, orange levels and structures it in a way that someone is always going to be doing generally less than they're capable of doing and they're not going to be doing any one rep maxes or anything that's going to require a lot of central nervous system development which just takes a long time to develop right and so even if you have somebody that used to play sports a long time ago and they come in and they're no longer fit that person can be even more dangerous because they in their mind they think they 
can do it. And then also their body, you know, has issues from the past. So we want to always kind of introduce somebody into this, the the game. And the, the first step is always doing that initial assessment to kind of see where you are, but not pushing somebody to like absolutely eke out like the most they can possibly do on the first interaction with the map. Right. You just kind of want to get an idea. And when you get an idea, it's like, okay, this person's going to be around yellow or around orange, around blue. Immediately we have way more information and it gives somebody a guiding force through all of those things. And it prevents them from doing things that are just not appropriate for them. Even though when they come, sometimes people come from a different gym they had different standards and they think in their mind that they're say like using the level method, like blue or purple. But when they then assess, they find out that actually when you hold someone to the standard, they're actually in the yellow or orange. Mm. This can, this can bother, you know, this like, Oh, I should be doing this, but that's why it, it, there's an ego check of, well, it's like a scale. <laughs> this is yeah. the scale and I can be pissed at the scale, but this is kind of where I am. And then now what's the next step to improve over time. Yeah, I mean, that classic example, which does appear um, within the map, is Fran. I mean, every experienced CrossFitter anyway has um, their own uh, little mental check on the first time they did Fran or maybe the best experience they ever um, had while doing Fran. And it's that litmus test. Like, we we all use that as a, as a metric. But at the same time, we all recognize that we're not the same athlete either. It, you know, the pro athletes can rep that out in two minutes. That's not what the average athlete can do when they're doing an RX version of the workout. So then the question becomes, well, at what point, once the time domain exceeds, um, you know, four or five minutes, at what point do we start scaling that workout to bring the time down, keep the intensity level up, keep the movement standard up, um, and kind of modify the workout to make that version of Fran appropriate to where the athlete is. And I think that's where the level method on that assessment specifically, but looking at all of the uh, categories of assessments do a really nice job of allowing an athlete to better understand how to maintain the intended stimulus for a given workout, particularly those that are on the metabolic end um, or have a skill component to them to make them appropriate to where they can objectively say they are right now based on how they're assessing in the gym. Absolutely. You know, that's, that brings up energy systems always. Mm. Um, so when you look at, when you take a look at the front or lactic, we call it lactic tolerance right. or lactic endurance, depending on where you come from. But um, the, the, that la that is a lactic test, right? And so right. if you, we, we just finished a, a, an energy system blueprint course, the first one that we've done. <clears throat> and just this four-week course where we go over all the core concepts of the energy systems behind what we do. And the simplest way to think about it is that energy system equals or energy systems equal sensation. Mm. So when you when you do a certain workout in a certain way, you're going to elicit a certain sensation. If you're doing like base work, you know, you're breathing nice and steady. There's not really anything that's really terrible, right? If you're doing strength work, it's very hard contraction. It's not necessarily like repping them out. If you're doing a lactic tolerance workout, there's a very specific sensation that is elicited. And every, everyone who's done Fran knows. Oh, yeah. Done it correctly, right? The so heavy breathing, the burning muscles. Exactly. And the way yeah. that we categorize lactic tolerance is full body burn. Right. It's like my whole body is burning. It's, there's not any one place where I'm like, ooh, it's just my whole body is in pain and it's just uncomfortable. Right. And and that's a pro that's a product of the kind of fuel you're using and switching over and you know using more sugars and then depleting it and then uh, you know the lactic acid everything is kind of that's all part of the system. And so when you look at when you look at the levels, if I have Fran. And I have somebody who can't even do one pull up. And then I have the, you know, two minute people Th those are completely different workouts, but it's right. the same workout, but to the person, it's a different workout because the way that workout makes them feel is different for each person. Right. And so when you look at the level method, now the, the, the progression up the line, you're looking at trying to make every appropriate level feel the, 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 the right way. So that's why when you look at the lactic tolerance, says at the end it's Fran, but up in the early uh, points it's like 
bodybuilders and jumping pull-ups and similar movements that are using a lot of my body that is going to elicit the same sensation. So when you see somebody who does that test at orange, they should look pretty much the same right. as somebody yeah. who does it at blue. They, like yeah. Everybody should look the same at the end. They should feel the same way. And that that's really the big thing about how level method was calibrated, that it's calibrated from an objective sense of like what's blue or whatever, but it's also calibrated in the sense of like, we're trying to make it the same at every, and it's not perfect, right? It cannot be perfect because no. of the variations in people, everybody's right. different, but we have a framework that kind of lets us do it. But it's, it's all like, I love talking about energy systems because that's really the behind the scenes of when, when someone sees the map, a lot of times it's just like, wow, there's like all this stuff and what does it all mean? But behind it is these very much layered complexities that become very fun to talk about. Right. And I mean, with the with the way that you approach things and I mean, you know, I have I have the advantage of having been at a gym for, that's been using it for uh, I think we're at the two year mark now. And mm -hmm. the the idea of having um, the the system layered over the programming. And so like everybody really understands what the what the common scalings are, but they're they're specifically codified to the athlete and coincidentally to the coaches i mean we're still doing all the scaling that we would have done at the front of the room anyway the difference here is that for example um you know when when we're looking at the workout the the specific scaling for the blue athlete as compared to the purple or brown athlete is right there on the screen and so you know the the part-timer in the morning and the part-timer in the afternoon don't have to talk to one another to say well here's what i did to scale this particular movement they have the same basic framework to to work from as a starting point they still have the flexibility as a coach to modify as needed to meet the athlete where they are but at the very least there's there's that framework to start from and so that's one of the things that i really appreciated being a part-time coach is that i can just walk in and and know where where to start that that idea is like it just ma it makes my heart warm to hear you talk about it that way because it's like that is exactly why it is the way it is it, it, it's just a framework so we will hear criticisms of level method from various people almost always not having experience with actually seeing how it works right but th that idea of systematic scaling and and almost empowering even the athlete or the member to kind of start to figure it out. They're like, oh, if I do this and they, 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 the connections are just better. And at the end of the day, you get people that understand scaling and understand how to do a, an appropriate workout better than if they did it the opposite way where you're fumbling in the dark forever. So you can yeah. go now with the, if you, if you enter with level method, you can then go and your understanding of scaling with no framework at all is better than it would have been. We've certainly right? experienced that with athletes that have started since the level method was introduced. When the level method was introduced uh, for athletes that were already partway through their fitness journey, or God forbid, they were, they were, you know, my age and had been doing it for long enough. There was always a little bit of a little bit of an abrasion there um, because we're just used to doing that. People are resistant to change. But always. when we have people come in that are completely brand new and they see this visualization of, okay, what, what's the progression? Uh, and some of them are like a single uh, modality. Some of them are, are multiple modalities. Some of them are short. Some of them are long, very much mirroring the, the, the classic approach to CrossFit in general anyway. I mean, th this is one of the reasons that I, I wanted to have this conversation is because I've, I've heard lots of discussion of the idea of, you know, coming like scaling being cool, scaling being something that should be systematized uh, in inside of a gym. And you have been doing that for quite some time. And what I see with the athletes that we have that have come up through the level method, having never seen any other system whatsoever, is that they have a better understanding and a better appreciation for um, how to hold themselves accountable to what the standards are for their given color level and respect what the journey is likely to be to get them to those next levels because they know how much work is really involved in being able to make progress on that map. Absolutely. And I mean, this comes back to the programming also, you know, because the, the the scaling is only as good as the programming, right? Like the, if the programming sucks, it's... Yeah. Right, and they like, have a so relationship for sure. 
Yeah, and you want to look at the the behind the scenes of what the framework of the programming is. In in level method, the the we use the acronym acronym LIT, which is L I T. We got levels. Mm -hmm. So in our mind, all workouts should be leveled, mm -hmm. right? It, it, and they should make sense. And it should they and it should be based on a structure that makes sense, not like a random today I want to level it this way because I feel this way. It's you know it's objective. Then you have intent, which is uh, all about energy systems. And so all of the workouts that we do, they're baked, they're based on energy system principles. So that's the way they're scaled. Right. And like as an example, you might have a workout that is kipping pull-ups, right? Or, or we'll just use kipping pull-ups as an example. And as we go down the line, you could, you could scale those as a strict ring row or a jumping pull-up, depending on what the purpose of the workout is, right? So if it's a more stamina based workout, like more muscular based, I might choose a ring row because I'm getting a good contraction. But if it's more metabolic based, so it's more breathing and a lot of big movements and stuff, then I might do a jumping pull up to scale. Right. So yep. when you, that's the intent side is understanding that as you go down the line, you want to scale for intent. And then finally we have themes and themes is how we rotate through things in our programming. So we have like, and if you've seen any of that, it's just basically, um, you know, the energy system, the virtuosity aspect, we have a fun and cool, but that's the way the, the programming is layered out. Right. Um, but those three elements, levels, intent, and themes lay, it's like, it's, that's, it's our programming is like a massive part of what we do. And a lot of people think that we are a programming company. But it's much more that we are giving the framework and we do the programming because it was requested by so many people for so mm. many years. We're like, okay, finally, we'll do it. Right. Well, and it, I think the the programming also in, in a roundabout way helps you demonstrate how the how the map can be applied. I think if, if gyms did their own programming and applied the map themselves, everyone would get subtly different things out of it. And so I think that that centralization of approach on the on the programming side, I think is another way of providing a degree of shorthand to the gyms that are are then using the programming to be able to to communicate with their their athletes, also have their coaches all be on the same page. Um, you know, I, I think and they still have the flexibility to be able to change things when they want to as well. I know we've made the odd change as well because there's certain days of the week are programmed and then there's a, what is it? Six days a week are programmed and one day is, is a rest day kind of thing. And right. our gym happens to operate seven days a week. So we wind up slotting something else in um, mm -hmm. or or we'll take or we'll move something that still kind of fits the themes for uh, either that week or a given four or five week cycle. Yeah. I mean, levels, <clears throat> the, 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 the customization of the programming is absolutely crucial because mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at, and this is really talking to coaches and owners, like the way that you would look at the programming, we give programming out, like, here you go, but it's, we have to make compromises because of the wide variance in the kinds of gyms and the people and the knowledge that we have. So yeah. there's always yeah. this, we, we basically go like, the 85% across that everybody's going to like, you know, and what individuals have to do is understand that that then gives you a great uh, framework to work from if you wanted to, to adjust or change. We do have gyms that do their own programming mm -hmm. uh, with level methods. So, and, and that's originally, it was just a framework of levels. And so in the earliest days, we didn't do programming. We just was like, here's a, here's a system do it all yourself and, you know, use your own programming and level it out. But that's just so much work. Right. And mm. so we do still have people that have their own programming, but if you're going to do the level method, right, you have to have leveled programming, which then means that you've got to level the programming, which takes forever. Yeah. <laughs> and so people stop doing it after a while. Yeah. Yeah. It, it certainly can be fairly time consuming depending on the, 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 quite the degree of variety that you're looking to provide over the course of a, a longer cycle of, of workouts. Um, you know, I, I've found even just myself where there's a couple of classes that I'm responsible for programming. Um, you know, I still wind up leveling them out, but I, what I do is I, I take the, you know, I have got enough experience and I've seen the, the level method implemented for so long that I have a, a, a strong sense of what the intent is behind the, the various different approaches to leveling a workout out so that when I come up with one, I'll use that same framework and that'll be in the back of my mind when I'm scaling the workout and, and putting those levels up on the TVs. 
So whether it's, you know, decreasing the loading, decreasing the rep scheme, some combination of the two, in, including changing the range of motion potentially, or moving, moving from one movement into another, all of those are options that are left on the table in order to provide the right stimulus. I mean, really, you're just providing RX for a, a, a wider array of level of athlete. Um, and so that way it's not left to interpretation. It's right there and not, not quite black and white, but in the colors of, of the level method. Well, it's so funny because the RX, th that concept of RX is a prescription. Yeah. Right? And a prescription is almost always going to be based on the individual. Right. Right. So it's like you don't have like a prescription, like if you have a, a 120 pound lady and then a, you know, a 300 pound dude, they're not going to have the same amount of drug that you get from the doctor. It's like clearly going to be adjusted. And when you th think about fitness in that same way, there's so many different ways to be fit, but everybody is unique, you know, and everybody should have a workout that is as close to individualized as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the age old argument about, you know, individual program design versus group classes. And is there a way to do to mix and you have uh, individualized programming in a group? And that's really what we're trying to do is to allow that very, very focused on the client idea to mm. adjust workouts on the fly very easily. And with, you know, coaches that are still new can, can also do that in a much better way. Right. You mentioned, so when, when you started, it was just a framework. Did, was the framework as we see it now, how, how many evolutions of the framework did you wind up going through to come up with the 15 categories and and all the different uh, belt levels, because I mean, in each color, you've got four levels as well. So I mean, it's a, it's a pretty pretty comprehensive grid of uh, different assessments that uh, an athlete can complete. Yeah, the the first uh, map was it was essentially white white to black, so it didn't go up to red yet, and mm -hmm. it was much harder calibration. So version one of the map, which came out in 2016, we ran until 2019. And um, it was just too hard because I had come from like a more competitive background. And I like, even though I worked with clients, I didn't really fully understand what a white and yellow level person was. Right. So I, I still calibrated them too heavy. And then as we had people coming in and then people using the level method, we, we quickly saw, cause we track all the data. We could see that like everybody was clumped up in yellow. You right. know, so and we're like, ooh, this is not, this is probably a problem. Like everybody is here, nobody is getting up here. What's going on here? So um we had a, a a masters or a youth map separate project. And so that was a little bit quote unquote easier calibration. Mm -hmm. So we combined those two maps into version two, which is what we have now, okay. <clears throat> which basically blew out all of the levels. So it made the white level easier on entry for the beginner and mm -hmm. then we pull out into the quote-unquote red elite which is the competitor zone right and so that allowed us to kind of just give the people that did want to compete a, a barrier of okay well you should probably only be thinking about competing at a high level if you're in this area mm, if right. you're not in this area yet just focus on building up your levels <laughs> do you right. know what i mean so that's uh that's kind of the the evolution yeah i mean it's clear that it's intended for a very broad audience which i think is is appropriate given that you know i i would expect anyway that the majority of crossfit gyms out there and and even non -cross crossfit gyms alike probably they're they're their average population, uh, you know, the best athlete versus the the most beginner level athlete, the spread between them is so substantial. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you're right, having stuff clustered around a, a particular level of athlete would make things uh, less applicable and um, a, a little harder for the athlete to engage with and not give the the coaches within that facility the same degree of tools that I think the the broader application of the map delivers. Yeah, that entry point is really the, mm. if it's too hard, so the idea is you want it to be available to everybody. Anybody right. who comes in can get on the map. You can bring your grandma. She's going to, you know, she's going to be able to get on the map. And so when we, the original one, if we had people that weren't getting on the map, then that's what we would call like an anti-powerful moment. <laughs> it's like the opposite of what we're trying to do here. Right. We want everybody to get on the map because then you have a starting place. And then it's right. like, oh, you see all these people in a normal environment doing muscle ups and snatches. 
And it's just, it seems completely impossible that someone is ever going to get there. But then when you, when you get on the map physically, you can be like, oh, I can see I'm here. And then if I go down far enough, I'm going to get to snatches or yeah. I'm going to get the muscle up. So it's just a, you know, it's just a, it helps people be clear on, uh, you know, the path. Well, particularly since most of those steps in between are incremental in nature relative to where they're starting to. It's not like they're they're leaps and bounds ahead to get to the next level. They really do have a, a fairly clear and incremental progression to get there. So I, I think that does help the athlete better understand what expectations should be for themselves. Right, right. And that's that that are those are bottlenecks. Yeah. So, you know, in any in any of the categories you will get little bottlenecks, either, either psychological barriers, like it goes to a new kind yeah. of movement and someone's hesitant, or it's a, a big jump in like a bunch of weight or something like that. But yeah. you can see these bottlenecks. And in the early days, part of that version two was, you know, exploding them a little bit. So mm -hmm. where are the bottlenecks? Okay, if there's like a 10% of people here, right here, what are the intermediary steps in between those? And then right. we blow out the levels a little bit. So now we have a better progression. And so that happened multiple times. And that's why the progressions, we have less bottlenecks now because we've really worked on that, but mm -hmm. we still have some as it'll always be. But it's it's uh, very interesting when you look at it that way. What's what's the next uh, evolution of the level method as you envision? And I mean, you've, you've gone through a, a 2.0 iteration already. What are some of the things that you're working on for the future? So a lot of AI stuff, one of, and with programming, a lot of things around programming specifically, the map itself is pretty well settled. We might have a, another update sometime in the future, but um, the, you know, using it, imagine if you had the framework of levels mm -hmm. and AI was able to then scale workouts, you could take any workout or any program and then have it scaled in level method automatically. So you mm -hmm. could get all the levels right away. So you could take main side, you could take whatever, right. plug it in and um, you have them. And so that we think will help with uh, expanding because we get, do get a lot of people that want to do their own programming or, they, or the programming they're doing, they like. Right. So if there was a way just to allow them to plug it in and get what they needed. Or they might be doing cap, which they get access to for free when when they're right. an affiliate anyway. So, that, but right. yeah, then, then they have the extra work of having to come up with the the levels in order to actually apply the level method to that programming system. Right. So it's just that streamlining element. You know, we yep. have some business development stuff for gym owners. Right. Uh, and then we are launching um, just programming only. So for gyms that don't want to run the level method, they can only do the programming. So that's kind of like another, but right. a lot of our, what we do now, a lot of it is uh, like more business related, trying to grow level method and, just make sure that we're, you know, keeping the quality high always, that we're not getting complacent or anything like that, and just making sure that we're delivering to to our clients. Right. I don't know if too many uh, gym owners would would uh, commonly listen to the Box Jumper podcast, but if somebody wants to get in touch with Level Method and and reach out and learn a little bit more about how to apply the system to their gym, how do they reach you? levelmethod.com that's the best place and all the infos there we're just in the process now of overhauling so next in the coming year there'll be a new website but um yeah very if anybody is interested you could also email me if you have any questions nathan at levelmethod.com be happy to fill you in <laughs> awesome cool. all right well Nathan, I really appreciate it. I, um, I'm sure I'll come up with a myriad of questions after we hang up. Uh, so I might fire you an email and include it in either the intro or the outro to the uh, to the episode. But I really appreciate you getting together with me and, and talking shop. Perfect. Thanks, man. I appreciate you having me on. All right. Thanks so much. Another episode comes to an end. All that's left is the M wrap up. You can well imagine how systems layered over the pursuit of objective measures of fitness can be used to make genuine progress in a safe and effective environment. A good CrossFit coach would do much of what the level method system delivers as a matter of course. But what's different here is that now all the coaches on a team have a common framework to apply to the gym. And a team can include a blend of part-time and full-time coaches of varying levels of experience and varying levels of connectedness to one another over the course of a week of coaching. And in particular, if a gym is subscribed to the Level Methods programming track, then you get effective workouts that have been programmed with the Level Methods system in mind from the very beginning. In either case, you have a structure to use to track fitness over time. 
Rather than arbitrarily testing yourself on a handful of classic benchmark workouts every three to six months, you instead follow a structured program with an assessment model that makes the progression within key categories that complement one another to collectively define your personal objective level of fitness. You can program whatever you want around it, but at its heart, the level method is a plan to achieve fitness. And that, to me, is very much what Greg Glassman's vision of fitness was when he wrote What is Fitness? Before that article, fitness was a subjective thing without a concrete and accepted definition of what it should mean in simple and measurable terms. The level method takes that philosophy forward, providing a framework to define your fitness with objective, measurable, and repeatable assessments that address multiple measures of capacity across broad time and modal domains. Kind of sounds like CrossFit through and through. If you like this episode, please share it with others or even write a review on Apple Podcasts. It does actually help fitness-minded people find the podcast. If you have ideas or questions, send me an email at podcast at boxjumper.ca and be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram with the handle at boxjumperover40. Thanks again for listening. Be sure to follow or subscribe in your favorite podcasting app so you get the next episode when it's released. Until then, stay healthy, wad happy, and wad often. <laughs>